One of the most inspirational stories that have shaped my life is that of Moses. Now, I'm not sure what it is that makes him so easy to identify with. He seems to be quite the unlikely hero. Maybe it's the fact that he led a life that wasn't perfect and that he made plenty of mistakes. Maybe it is that I feel if God can use someone like Moses, sometimes stuck in fear, sometimes defaulting to anger, often feeling not good enough, then maybe he can use me too, even with all my wounds and my baggage. A wonderful invitation that I find in Moses' life, however, is that every time he hits a glitch, every time he became aware of unhealthy habits in his life, every time he made a mistake, he was willing, even sometimes eager, to grow. He murders an Egyptian, flees, he hides, and then God calls him to go back to the place that he made this mess. He works through his resistances and he grows to such an extent that God uses him as the leader that challenges the great Egyptian pharaoh. He disobeys God and he strikes the rock in anger and frustration. God holds him accountable. He accepts responsibility and the consequences of his actions. And he finds peace even when he can't enter the promised land. And here in today's scripture... We find Moses in the wilderness in an unhealthy, unsustainable way of living. And what does he do? He welcomes how God comes to him. He accepts counsel and he grows. Read with me this part of Moses' story. Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, together with Moses' son and wife, came to him in the wilderness where he was camped near the mountain of God. So Moses went out to meet his father-in-law and bowed down and kissed him. They greeted each other and then went into the tent. Moses told his father-in-law about everything the Lord had done to Pharaoh and the Egyptians for Israel's sake and about all the hardships they had met along the way and how the Lord had saved them. Jethro was delighted to hear about all the good things the Lord had done for Israel in rescuing them from the hand of the Egyptians. When his father-in-law saw all that Moses was doing for the people, he said, What is this you are doing for the people? Why do you alone sit as judge, while all these people stand around you from morning till evening? Moses answered him, Because the people come to me to seek God's will. Whenever they have a dispute, it's brought to me. And I decide between the parties and inform them of God's decrees and instructions. Moses' father-in-law replied, What you are doing is not good. You and these people who come to you will only wear yourselves out. The work is too heavy for you. You cannot handle it alone. Have them serve as judges for the people at all times, but have them bring every difficult case to you. The simple cases they can decide themselves. That will make your load lighter because they will share it with you. If you do this and God so commands, you will be able to stand the strain and these people will go home satisfied. We confess that God comes to us in many different ways. And yet, like Moses, we can very easily become disconnected from these elements that communicate God's voice to us. Think about how Moses seems to be disconnected from his physical health. Jethro sees Moses is about to wear himself out. It's too much. His body can't take it. But Moses seems oblivious. And it looks like Moses is also disconnected from his family. He sent them away. He doesn't hear God through the the ones he loves most dearly. So Moses is burned out, disconnected. Yet many would say high-functioning and successful. Doesn't that sound so much like the reality we often find ourselves in as well? Think about the husband and wife, co-parenting and running a household, but saying goodnight to each other as strangers before bedtime. The elderly parent, yearning for an unhurried, undistracted dinner with his adult child, but who has to settle for a quick telephone conversation once a month. 
The colleague who goes home alone each night and wishes the hours to pass quickly for the only sense of companionship watered down by the rush of the nine to five. The stranger looking desperately for someone's smile, someone's eye, just to remember that she's not invisible. The CEO, teacher, doctor, business owner, homemaker that is at the end of his or her capacity, burnt out and isolated among everyone who needs him or her, longing for someone to call him out and to stop the spiral that seems to control his every day, each day. It's the chaotic self-made trap of disconnection. And so often we don't hear God calling us to slow down and recognize our disconnections. The good news is that it doesn't have to be this way. Another way of life is possible, a connected life, a life of deep belonging. I wonder, can you recall a time when you last felt a deep sense of belonging? A while ago, in a busy and stressful time, I took a day of leave and made three appointments with three of my close friends. In the first conversation, we spoke about life and kids and new ideas. Afterwards, I felt inspired to remember the creativeness within me. In the second conversation, we spoke about how subtly our emotional wounds can show up, how we can grow, and how we can meaningfully meet our children in their moments of anxiety and insecurity. I felt encouraged. And in the third conversation, we spoke about grace and how often we don't get things right, but how God reveals himself in, how, himself in interesting and creative ways. I felt understood. These three connections were a gift for me. And in my experience, I felt God coming to me and speaking to me. Encounters with God through others. Amidst this haze of survival, it takes a very specific encounter for Moses to realize that God is speaking. How is God coming to us in the wilderness? And will we go out and meet him ready to grow? In this story of Moses and Jethro, we can discover some helpful invitations for our life with Jesus today. The first one is simply to become present. I love how Moses starts telling Jethro about what is going on in his life and allows him to observe how he works. I imagine the conversation after Jethro listened to and watched Moses. He invites Moses to actually take a proper look at his life. Moses explains and justifies. He lays out how and why things work the way that they do. And Jethro's response? What? are you doing, Moses? I was dealing a couple of years ago with my husband's accident and juggling a newborn, my job, family life, and frequent visits to the hospital. And everything was fine. So fine that I avoided any deep conversations with my parents, any meaningful connections with my colleagues, and definitely made sure not to have any vulnerable moments with my closest friends. They'll understand, I said. They did. But this high-functioning, task-driven, superwoman Tureen isolated herself and had to relearn what it meant to open up to the love of her community. I remember it was a casual remark one of my colleagues made that brought me to, the que to this question that Moses was faced with. This colleague said, she's in her task mode. She was describing that I was disconnected from people, from relationships, and simply going through the motions of getting everything done and being everything for everyone. What are you doing, Tareen? Thank God that he found me and led me back to the blessing of connection. It required becoming present, observing, and recognizing a growing awareness. And this is what seems to be happening here between Moses and Jethro. They see each other. They hear each other. Both Jethro and Moses are present and attentive. And Jethro is truly interested in what is going on in Moses' life. This enables true connection. 
The second invitation I think we can discover here is to dare to be vulnerable. I can imagine it was rather important for Moses to appear together and in control. A leader must be strong, right? He mustn't waver or let anyone see that he's tired, uncertain or stressed. And yet Moses humbly goes out to meet his father-in-law there in the wilderness. He bows down and kisses him and then respectfully allows him into his world without trying to impress him or trying to hide anything. Just picture this for a moment. Jethro is an unlikely mentor. If you consider that he's not an Israelite, he's a Midianite priest who does not yet know the God of the Israelite like Moses does. Moses could easily have turned away from the advice and input that Jethro was giving, thinking, ah, he doesn't get what it takes to be a leader of a mass of people. He doesn't know the journey that God has set out for us. He could even have said, he's not really one of us. How could he possibly understand? But Moses dares to be vulnerable and opens himself up to this profound mentorship and finds someone who understands, compassionately reflects with him, and offers some life-giving advice. Now, our initial inclination may not be to open up to the possibility of deeply profound connections. Vulnerability can be scary since we have to admit things to ourselves and risk that those around us see us differently. We may even feel that we don't know where to begin. Perhaps we can focus on two things as a starting point. The first, humility. Imagine what our conversations and interactions with each other could be like if we believe that the person sitting across from me may hold a gift from God, ready for me to unlock. What if rather than bringing a heart and head full of op opinions and answers, we arrive with space to receive new insights? Open and empty, this is humility. And this may just create the sacred ground on which we can have our own burning bush type of revelations and encounters with God. The encounter between Moses and Jethro brought about profound shifts and changed the future of the people of Israel. Huge movements in the space of a regular conversation. And then courage. It's easy to hide. It's comfortable to hide in a small, under-the-radar life. It's courageous to open up, to admit your uncertainties, to stress, to, to admit that you're stressing to admit that you're exhausted, to admit your humanness. It takes courage to recognize your weaknesses, to open up and to do the work that is necessary to grow. Humbly and courageous, we can dare to be vulnerable. This is healthy ground for connections to be restored and even new connections to form. So fumble for words or use creative ways to express yourself when you can't find the words. You don't need to articulate well what you are feeling or how you are doing. You just need to somehow, even stumbling and clumsily, offer it in the sacred space of deep connection and dialogue. Invite the Holy Spirit to help you. Ask for the grace of humbly and courageously opening up to God's voice in your life, also through the people he sends your way. And then, restructure. God reveals himself in many ways, also through these encounters, through connection. He invites us to take up this journey offered to us. We may then catch glimpses of what we need to let go of that have caused us to become disconnected from ourselves, disconnected from others, and disconnected from God in a friendship with him. Like Moses, it may be the pace of life, the size of the workload, maybe too many roles we are playing. This brings to mind Dallas Willard's invitation, ruthlessly eliminate hurry from your life. We may need to let go of some of the distractions or the temptations in our life. I think for King David and King Solomon, this was sometimes the case. It may be comparisons or fear 
as the Israelites experienced. Maybe the need for control or affirmation. Are you perhaps becoming aware of some restructuring required in your life which requires you to let go of something? This restructuring also brings new energy, hope, synergy, healing. As we recognize our part in a gracer community, we get to see and hear what becomes possible when we move beyond our own realm of control, beyond our own lonely existence, beyond our own struggles and limitations. When we see ourselves as belonging in God's community, for God's community, we can let the person of the one woman army, Superman, the only one they turn to, all of the ways we describe ourselves that keep us from living well in relationship with ourselves, others, and God, then we can let that go. That is no longer who we need to be. We don't have to stay in the pain of disconnection. What a relief. How free this makes us. How open to give and receive we can now be. Going into the desert and finding ourselves disconnected and burned out is tough. But recognizing how God sends the Jethro's into our wilderness, calling us back to see and accept that we are part of God's community can strengthen and rejuvenate us. Then we can be again who we are created to be and function in the way we were created to function, to use our gifts and live within our calling every day in life-giving and joyful ways. We don't belong in the world we've created for ourselves or the corner we feel pushed into where we simply survive, where every day is just like the day before. We don't belong in the isolated prisons we may feel trapped in. We belong in deep friendship with God, experiencing his gifts through meaningful connection with the people he has blessed us with, in our own being as he reveals more and more of who we are in his eyes and within the beautiful world he has placed us. We belong. You belong. So perhaps we can consider together as we recognize ourselves in the wilderness of distraction, barriers, and painful disconnection. Who are the Jethro's coming towards us now? Will you open up to the possibility that he or she may be God's voice calling to you? And I wonder, can we remain sensitive to the fact that sometimes We are the ones entering into the wilderness of someone else's longing for connection and belonging. May we be open to the possibility that God may work through us as well. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you for the way that you've created us to be. Thank you that we may belong in relationship with you, with ourselves and with others, And that this life is life-giving life. That this life means that we can live significantly with purpose. That this life means that we can truly belong. Lord, show us how we may need to restructure. Help us to become present, Lord. Help us to be vulnerable where we need to be. Holy Spirit, come into our lives and make us sensitive to your voice as we follow you to this abundant life, this full life. Thank you, Lord. We pray for the grace of experiencing deep connections in our relationships and in our dialogues. Amen. Receive the blessing of the Lord. May the love of God our Father the friendship and the grace and the forgiveness of Jesus Christ, his son, and the fellowship, the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit be with each of us. Amen.